Welcome back to season two of Practical Stoicism. I am your host, Tanner Campbell, and I would like to start today's episode off by, first of all, thanking you for returning, and secondly, by announcing my book, Practical Stoicism, Volume 1. It's officially available for purchase now. It's available on Kindle for $8.99, in paperback for $9.99, and in hardcover soon for a yet undetermined price, but I suspect it'll be around $12.99. My margins on this are pretty thin. I make $5 per book. That's how I've priced it. You may or may not know that self-publishing is kind of a racket, but if you would like to support me in that racket, you can purchase the book on Amazon, either on the website or through Kindle. I'll put a link in the show notes of this episode so that you can do that if you'd like to. A couple hundred of you took action and registered for the free PDF copy when the book released, so you'll be getting that soon, probably before the end of the weekend. Now, if you get the free PDF copy and you'd still like to support me by buying a proper copy, I would appreciate that, but you don't have to. In any event, if you enjoy this podcast, regardless of whether or not you get a copy of this book, either in PDF form or in quote unquote proper form, I would be so appreciative if you went to the Amazon listing and reviewed the book and gave it five stars. Getting the book to trend so that people outside of the podcast can come to know about it will be hard to do and relies somewhat on first week engagement. So getting people to review the book, say nice things about it. If you've listened to the podcast, you know all about the book. The book is essentially a textual version of the podcast with some added commentary. But if you wouldn't mind reviewing the book and leaving it five stars, if you feel comfortable doing that, I would be appreciative. Again, there is a link in the show notes of this episode that will take you directly to the book's listing on Amazon. Now, let's get on to why everybody's actually here, which is to get into the next meditation. And we are now moving into book three of the meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which is entitled In Carnuntum. Carnuntum was a kind of gladiator town and a legionary fortress on the shores of the Danube River. At this point in history, Marcus has moved from fighting the German Quadi and has moved upriver to fight the Marcomanni, also German. So as we rejoin Marcus, he is still, as he said in one of the last meditations from Book 2, engaged in warfare on a journey far from home. The first meditation of Book 3 reads as follows. Not just that every day more of our life is used up and less and less of it is left, but this too. If we live longer, can we be sure our mind will still be up to understanding the world, to the contemplation that aims at divine and human knowledge? If our minds start to wander, we'll still go on breathing, go on eating, imagining things, feeling urges, and so on, but getting the most out of ourselves, calculating where our duty lies, analyzing what we hear and see, deciding whether it's time to call it quits, all the things you need a healthy mind for, all those are gone. So we need to hurry, not just because we move daily closer to death, but also because our understanding, our grasp of the world, may be gone before we get there. Now this is a rather morbid and sad thought to start our journey out with, but there it is. As we age, we risk the loss of our faculties. We could live to be 100 years old, for example, but we could suffer a stroke at 60, or a terrible car wreck at 40, and those events could leave our mental faculties so greatly reduced that any time we may have had to do our best work and live our best lives would vanish in an instant and never be recovered. My grandfather was born in 1912, two months before the Titanic sank. He lived to be 94 years old, and most fortunately for him, the grip of senility did not get a hold of him until his last three years or so. For some of us, it will be like it was for my grandfather. We'll have plenty of time to become the person we want to be and to live a long life as that person. And by the time our faculties start deteriorating and we slip off to an unceremonious and quiet death, we'll have realized our human purpose and have lived it. But for others of us, the opposite will be true. We will lose our faculties far earlier, far sooner than what will seem to be fair, and once that's happened, there's no going back, no opportunity to finally buck up and pay attention to our character, to developing it and becoming our best selves. So it's not just death that's coming for your time. 
It's also the unforeseen events that may visit upon you, tragedies you're unable to even imagine. And these tragedies, if they come, may rob you of something far more precious than your lifespan. They may rob you of your ability to have control over your own mind. Again, I would like to thank you for returning for season two of Practical Stoicism. It means a lot to me that you're here and that you get so much out of this podcast. I wanna thank everyone for the notes of encouraging support during my break. That meant a lot to me as well. And remember, if you'd like to check out the book for season one, check the show notes for a link to Amazon. Thanks again, and until next time, take care.